cases in the world, almost 300,000 deaths, and just a quarter have recovered. Next slide. Okay, so as a breakdown, um, the leading country that is now dealing with the burden of um, coronavirus in the world is, U is the USA with almost 1.5 million cases and 83,000 deaths. In the Philippines, as of yesterday, we have recorded 11,350 total positive cases and um, we already have about 750 deaths. And as you all know, yung mga suspect cases natin, which are likely testing backlogs, are still a lot, 18,000. So really, we might just be seeing the tip of the iceberg. So overall, in the world, the Philippines actually ranks 32nd in terms of absolute numbers of people infected. But if you look at the right-hand most um, uh, column, you'll see that our testing rates are much lower than in other countries. Uh, for example, for us, we, we have 1,600 tests per 1 million population as compared to the U.S., now, considering they also had a huge testing backlog because of the delays of their government also, their testing is already at 30,000 per million. Okay, next slide. So the thing with COVID, it's the data is still evolving and scientists every week, there's every day, there's new articles that are printed on, um, published online about um, coronavirus and um, more and more, we're seeing that this really isn't just a simple respiratory disease. It's a multi-systemic disease. And in some cases, um, the presentations can, um, aside from um, damaging the respiratory organs, it can also affect the GI tract. Um, it can induce autoimmune-like syndromes. And so you see that um, in terms of manifestations, although fever, respiratory symptoms, and fatigue are most common, that there can be rarer symptoms. Uh, so for the GI tract, that includes diarrhea or GI upset. Next slide. So because of this multi-systemic, ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung lungs ang na-affect, hindi lang yung paghinga, ang nangyayari, it affects all of the organs. So it has effects on the brain, it has effects on the heart. So they've seen young people who have acute myocarditis-like syndromes or inflammations ng blood vessels, even clots and thrombosis leading to the um, death of these patients. No? But what we're more interested in this afternoon is uh, liver injury because uh, as you know, um, our concern is will this affect patients who are already living with uh, chronic liver disease, more specifically for our a topic this afternoon, chronic hepatitis B. Next. Next slide. So in terms of the studies na nakita na between COVID and liver tests, so what are liver tests? Um, most likely, most of you know na when your doctors ask you to check your liver function, they have you check your AST or SGOT and ALT-SGPT. These are liver enzyme tests. And um, indication usually is if these tests are elevated, so the normal value is usually about 35 to 45. If these values are elevated, ang um, indication is there might be inflammation or pamamaga in the liver. And studies have shown that these liver test abnormalities can happen in up to 40% of COVID patients. And they've seen uh, the worst, meaning patients who are in critical care, those who are in the ICU, are the ones who are more commonly the ones who present with abnormal liver tests. And the reason for this is likely multiple. It's not simply like, so COVID, like, COVID is caused by SARS-CoV-2, no? the virus. It's not like hepatitis B that zooms in on the liver and causes damage there. Ang propositions nila is that most likely the abnormal liver tests may be related to um, indirect inflammatory effects. So parang hepatotoxicity because of increase of inflammatory markers, yung mga things na nagkakos ng pamamaga sa katawan. Of course, if you're in critical care, mababa yung oxygenation kasi hirap yung lungs. 
the oxygen supply of your liver can also be affected. So, kumbaga, the liver mostly experiences collateral damage and you expect more collateral liver damage if the severity of disease is worse. So, these are the patients who, um, as you know, yung mga patients who need mechanical ventilation end up um, getting hypotension or admitted in critical care. Next slide. Okay, so I don't know if everyone is familiar, so I just um, included a few slides about a review on what hepatitis is. As you know, hepa means liver, itis means inflammation or pamamaga. So when you say hepatitis, we mean there is pamamaga ng atay. And the most common causes of liver injury can be viruses, more commonly yung hepatitis viruses, um, the more common that we know is A, B, C, D, and E. Other viruses including CMV, EBV, alcoholic drinks can cause hepatitis. Um, fatty liver, so liver fat um, excess that comes from obesity, diabetes, abnormal cholesterol levels can also lead to hepatitis. And lastly, and not to be ignored, and most likely, ito rin po yung isang pwedeng cause ng pamamaga ng atay in patients with covid is a drug-induced liver injury. So the liver is a powerful organ that helps in the processing of many things, not just the food that comes into our guts, but also medication. And that includes not just um, uh, prescription medications, but even over-the-counter drugs that many of us think are harmless, including pain relievers, um, herbal supplements, even herbal teas, herbal coffees can lead to uh, drug-induced liver injury. So for this afternoon, we'll focus more on hepatitis B. Um, it's a virus that causes a lot of the liver disease burden in the Philippines and hepatitis C because both can cause long-term liver injury. And patients typically end up living with these um, infections for a long time. Next. Okay, so um, just one by one ulit. So how common is Hep B amongst Filipinos? This comes from a most recent modeling study, meaning they used some math models and the best available data in the Philippines done by Dr. Ong and others. Um, in this um, study, the estimate of patients or Filipinos who are S antigen positive in the Philippines is about 9.7% of the population. So this roughly translates to about 10 million people with hepatitis B in the Philippines. So if you think about that, um, most likely a huge percentage of these patients are going around undetected because hindi nila, in most cases, hepatitis B has no symptoms and these patients don't know that they need to get tested. And ang unfortunate is sometimes patients are diagnosed with the infection only once they develop complication. Okay, next slide. So I told you about how the Philippines fares in the world in terms of um, absolute number of those with coronavirus documented infections. How about with hepatitis B? So in hepatitis B, based on the absolute number of people with hepatitis B, the Philippines ranks fifth um, uh, behind China, India, Nigeria, and Indonesia in terms of number of people with chronic hepatitis B. While for patients with um, uh, those who are five years old, so why is it important that we check those who are five years old? Because it is this um, population that we should have protected with the use of the universal vaccine. And we know that we're still going to deal with hepatitis B in the decades to come because as of um, this study um, done uh, two years ago, we are still seventh in the world in terms of a number of five-year-olds with hepatitis B. Next slide. So how does one get Hep B infection? So an ibig sabihin ng Hep B infection, it's basically anyone who tests as antigen positive. Ito yung ginagamit um, in screening programs where they get their S antigen is reactive or positive in the test. Um, enumerated here are the possible ways to get it. It's direct contact with infected blood and body fluid. So you can get it through sharp contaminated instruments, including needles, 
toothbrush, razors, nail clippers, uh, manicure and pedicure um, instruments, exposure to um, hospital equipment that may have been contaminated with um, hepatitis B, contact with an open wound, um, unprotected sexual contact, but naka-encircle yung childbirth because childbirth or maternal-to-child transmission is still the driving force for the persistence of hepatitis B in endemic countries like the Philippines. Next slide. So what about hepatitis C? I thought to add in a little bit, although it's not, I mean, 10 million as compared to that, yung hep C, the estimate of the same study was about 600,000 only. So you say only, but it's a vast number of people that may be vulnerable to complications of liver disease, including cirrhosis and also liver cancer. Unlike for hepatitis B, now we can argue because of the very high threat in 10 Filipinos have hepatitis B. Hepatitis C, we can choose to do a targeted approach in terms of testing. So, to be tested, those who are current or former injection drug users, those who have um, use of clotting factor concentrates in the 1980s, who had surgeries or transfusions in the 1990s or earlier, those who are long-term dialysis patients, um, to a smaller no level, infants born to infected mothers, patients with abnormal liver tests. So when you detect a patient abnormal yung ALT, at least once that patient should be screened for hep C, especially if with uh, risk factors. And also, it should be screened in patients who have HIV and hepatitis B because there will be implications for the treatment and in terms of your risk of complications. Okay, next slide. So review. So patients always ask this, acute ba ako do or chronic ba ako? Simply put, once you get the infection, kung na, nagkaroon ka ng infection, for example, um, natuso ka ng isang instrument na contaminated with a hep B virus, example sa barbero. So I commonly still see this, yung mga nagre-reuse ng blade uh, to shave sa barber shop. If they get um, infected, Ang tawag po sa infection na yon in the first six months is an acute hepatitis B infection. In the first six months, you have the chance to clear the virus. So if in the first six months, your immune system uh, does well by you and na-clear mo yung virus, then it stops there. You get acute hepatitis B infection and then after that, you get a resolved or cured hep B infection. However, if your much immune system is immature, for example, in babies or infants less than one year old who are exposed to their mother who has hepatitis B and were not vaccinated, you can get the chronic long-term shot. And then you have hep B positive um, tests for more than six months. So that's why sometimes doctors will ask you, ilang beses ka na ng test, kailan yung last test. So if you come into my clinic and you say, kasi po doc, noong 2003, positive po ko for hep B, and then we check you again, and positive ka pa rin, then you're sure that this patient is chronic. Kasi more than six months ang nakeri yung hepatitis infection. Okay, next slide. So, Ang acute, like I said, you still have a chance to resolve or cure the infection. And in 95% of the time, if you are exposed as an adult, for example, yung mga mag-asawa po na na-expose sa positive na spouse, 95% of the time, if magaling yung immune system, maki-clear yung virus ng husa. So hindi sila nagiging long-term carrier, unlike the spouse yung chronic becomes a long-term and frequently lifelong infection. And it's important, um, click, because this is the kind of infection that leads to complications. Meaning, um, you can get cirrhosis. So pag ma at first, you get the chronic hepatitis, so inflammation in the liver. And then pag matagal na yung pamamaga, then you get a scarred liver. Yun yung chronic hepatitis B cirrhosis. And then these patients who develop cirrhosis are the patients who may develop um, liver cancer later on. Okay, next. So, yan yun. So, going back to the main reason for the topic, if I have hepatitis B, uh, the following slides will basically go through some of the likely concerns of someone 
who is living with or who has a loved one with hepatitis B or C. Am I likely to get COVID? So there's no evidence as of now that a patient with hepatitis B or C is made more prone to acquire the infection of SARS-CoV-2 because they have hep B or C. However, it's important to know your status, especially in this part of the world, because depending on the status of your liver, remember, now when you have hepatitis B, you can have just chronic hepatitis B with a quiet infection. You can have ongoing inflammation or pamamaga ng atay. You may have cirrhosis or you may even have complications such as liver cancer already. So if you have um, a weaker liver, for example, you already have cirrhosis, the the precaution that we should take is because may cirrhosis ka na, your immune system is expected to be weaker. And this might mean that your capability to fight the infection uh, will give you a more severe version of the COVID infection. Next slide. Okay. So, uh, back. So again, review, um, back one more slide. Sino nga ba yung at higher risk of severe COVID? So who are these people? People with coronary heart disease, yung mga may sakit sa puso, hypertensives, diabetics, uh, those who are obese, those who have cancer, those who have chronic lung disease like asthma, COPD, bronchitis, emphysema, and older people. So older than 60, but more especially those who are more than 70. Kasi sila talaga yung at risk and nakita na spectrum ng population who have high, much higher mortality rates if they get COVID. So if you look at that, um, when you look at this, actually the uh, liver disease that most likely gives you at higher risk for severe COVID may even be fatty liver. Kasi yung fatty liver, sila yung pa-cluster ng coronary heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. Next slide. Okay, so um, we told you earlier, um, when you get COVID, um, what do we do now? If you have hepatitis B and you're taking antivirals, is that bad for me? Is that going to make me more prone to COVID? Should I stop my antivirals to protect me from COVID? So the short answer is no. You should actually keep on continuing taking your antivirals as advised by your doctor. So um, the first line agents available in the Philippines is tenofovir, uh, disoproxyl fumarate, TDF. Um, and also now the newer version, tenofovir alafenamide, is now available. Uh, and entecavir. So if you're in any of these drugs, make sure it's important to continue taking them because there is no evidence that these antivirals will affect your chances of getting COVID nor will it affect recovery if you do get infected by SARS-CoV-2. In fact, if you have hepatitis B, the, the chances that your doctor will most likely choose to start you on antiviral if you have an abnormal liver test are higher. Because um, kasama sometimes sa pag-treat po ng SARS-CoV or COVID disease, yung immunosuppressants which may trigger um, flares of your hepatitis B. Kasi they've shown also that um, in, in the previous, the first SARS outbreak, that there was a small study in Hong Kong where they saw that it seems like the patients who had hepatitis B, who had flares, had risk of more severe disease. So um, important, at least for your care provider, to know that you have hepatitis B, especially if na pagdating nyo po, say, na-admit kayo sa ospital, may na-diagnose ng COVID, nakita ka ba ng list, nakita ka na ka sa work up nyo, kung kumulo ng ibang underlying sa kasal, including hepatitis B or C. So, in fact, stopping your antivirus will just at risk Flares. Because as we know, your antivirals are being given to us to press or lower the load of you expect the virus to start replicating again. And um, that can cause uh, flares. Okay, next. Okay, so Ito pa yung isang major problem ng patients. No? I've encountered this also for some of my patients. How will I follow up with my gastroenterologist and hepatologist during this ECQ? 
kasi maraming clinics have been closed. Um, maraming labs um, ang, ang hindi uh, open. So, patients sometimes end up running out of medication. So, um, at the start, middle, and even up to uh, today, um, many of my patients have been asking me, Doc, paano yung naubos na yung prescription ko? Or nahirapan sila kasi hindi sila makabili ng gamot kasi hindi makapagpa-ship yung uh, farm, pharma company na provider nila. So, ang first is, do your best to call first. A lot of the doctors now, including myself included, and a lot of the members of HSP, have shifted their clinics to online clinics. And that is to... Um, Make sure that the patients receive the care that they need, the advice that they need, um, even if walang uh, physical clinic yet. And remember, um, what can you do for yourself at home? So as you know, most hepatitis B patients have no symptoms. No? But if you suddenly develop any of these symptoms of liver disease, you should consider probably trying to get in touch with your doctor. For example, if suddenly you have jaundice, yung white ng eyes nyo po naninilaw, yung ihi nagda dark brown or tea colored, if you have flu-like symptoms, if you have um, uh, new onset na right upper quadrant pain or symptoms na parang tinatrangkaso, um, fatigue, then maybe consider calling your doctor. Um, especially if um, hindi ka naka-antivirals and posible nagkaroon ka ng flare. Next. So, yun. Um, so, telehealth options uh, are should be available for a lot of us. Um, ang, ang value po ng telehealth is we are able, uh, at least um, in terms of my practice, I've noticed that the beauty is I'm able to um, parang walk my patients through. I may not be seeing them in clinic, pero at least I can see them. I can see if merong changes, especially my patients who have cirrhosis. Nagkakaroon ba ng pagmamanas that wasn't there before? Um, nagkaroon ba ng, um, uh, ng new symptoms na dati wala? Kailangan bang i-adjust yung gamot? Do we need to check a uh, liver enzyme tests? Kailangan bang i-evaluate kung ngayon yung time na dapat mag-start ng antivirals? or due na ba yung mga test and hindi pa namin nakikita. So these things can be coordinated within you or your physicians. And doctors have used many platforms. Yung iba po, may mga programs silang ginagamit. Sa iba, even as simple as phone calls or Facebook Messenger, um, we are able to get in touch with our patients. Next slide. So what about the normal things na because of this quarantine situation, paano yan doc hindi magagawa? So we expect and the doctors also understand that there may be delays in testing. So that is the reason then that telehealth is useful. Because during your telehealth consultation with your doctor, um, the assessment be based on paghistory po sa inyo, examine sa inyo ng doctor, the doctor will be able to say if it's okay, we can delay your blood tests for another month. We can choose to do your ultrasound another month. And it will um, empower you to continue taking the medication that you need to take. So other things that can be delayed, as you know, kung may hepatitis B at mahigit 40 na and pataas, ideally, nagpapa-ultrasound po kada six months. And that is to screen for new growths in the liver to screen early for early findings of liver cancer. So this can be delayed, pero ideally not more than two to three months as kid. Yung screening endoscopy in patients with varices, since considered elective, maaring pwede rin pong i-delay until such a time na safe na for the patient to go to the hospital. What about um, itong scenario na to? Some patients, for various reasons, nagpas, uh, halimbawa, hepatitis C and we were vaccinated for hep B. Tapos one dose pa lang yung nabigay. Tapos nangyari, you will be so delayed, uh, hindi mo matutuloy yung vaccination series mo. So that's fine. Um, it's the, Ang worst case scenario po niyan is your doctor might need to restart the vaccination series um, at a safer time. Pero it should, it's not gonna cause any harm naman po. We still encourage, especially those yung mga may um, chronic liver disease na talaga at may cirrhosis, to get the recommended vaccination. And that includes the flu vaccine. Especially since palapit na po ang flu season, 
uh, magiging confusing din kasi we're gonna have um, respiratory illnesses na, na maaring flu lang and can be confused um, as COVID. So if we can add a protection for another virus, then that should be taken. So uh, next slide. Okay, so um, this one, uh, I understand na marami pong questions about pregnancy. So sa, when you're pregnant during the time of COVID, wala namang evidence that pregnancy will give you higher risk uh, for COVID. So, um, but uh, if you notice, IATF may special precautions kasi of course, you, you're dealing with two patients in one body, the mother and the fetus. So if safe and able to arrange, continue yung prenatal checkup. Um, and um, important din in this manner to try to choose telehealth options. No? Kung kaya na um, sometimes kasi magpapa-ultrasound muna yung buntis na yung pagdala ng resulta uh, ng ultrasound might just be done by telehealth with the uh, OB provider of the patient. And you should still continue with a recommended vaccine and that might be include yung uh, tetanus and the hep B vaccine if deemed warranted. As for breastfeeding, there's no evidence as of now, of course, data is still accumulating na SARS-CoV-2 is found in breast milk. So the main concern pa rin for breastfeeding is uh, baka yung, uh, yung mom mahawa yung baby through the normal route of respiratory droplet. So if there is a concern that the mother may have COVID or may be exposed, uh, we advise the mother to wash hands and wear a mask if breastfeeding the child. Next slide. So, ito yung simple precautions. If you notice, if you're pregnant, how do you protect yourself against COVID? Um, same lang as what we are all being advised. Um, Pinaka-important is washing our hands, avoid yung men, avoid touching mouth, eyes and nose, um, physical distancing, at least six feet apart. Um, do not cough on your hands, yung uh, the dab move pag umuugo and use um, disposable tissue um, when you have to cough out. And of course, if you have symptoms, to please consult your health provider again, especially if pregnant. Next slide. Okay, so of course, please don't forget if you're pregnant, um, I understand um, based on yung pakikipag-usap ko for some of my patients na medyo may, may mga health centers na nagko-close, no? Pero this shouldn't be the case. So I asked DOH if their, um, uh, their usual health programs will be closed because of COVID. As much as possible, unless may manpower issues, they say na that should still continue. So yung vaccination series for infants, um, yung buntis uh, prenatal checkup should still be um, done as safely as possible. Okay, so all pregnant will need to be screened for hepatitis B. Next. So, ano yung ways um, you're pregnant, you're with hepatitis B? So, again, screen for hep B at least dapat kasama sa first checkup. Evaluate then. So, if you're hepatitis B, the same things that are done, no? yung pag-check ng ALT and DNA, should be done if possible to assess if the mother needs treatment. Kasi as we know, ang hepatitis B, hindi lahat kailangan magamot. Ang ginagamot lang po ay yung may ebidensya na may um, pamamaga sa atay dahil dun sa virus and nakikita na pa, kailangan pababain yung virus level para mawala yung inflammation sa atay and to decrease the risk of liver cancer or cirrhosis in these patients. So how do we prevent maternal to child transmission? Ang pinaka-importante is yung law pa rin, universal hep B vaccination. All pregnant women na mga nganak during this time should endeavor na mabigyan si baby ng first dose ng hep B vaccine within the first 24 hours of life. They should be free from your health center or from the hospital or from the lying in as covered by uh, the maternal pa uh, newborn package of ill health. Although not covered by the government, kung um, able and capable, it's ideal that um, babies get the vaccine, uh, an additional shot, yung hep B immune globulin, within 12 to 24 hours of birth at the opposite side, so at a different site as the hep B vaccine birth dose. So, ang isang question pa po is, pag ba yung baby na bakunahan for hepatitis B, 
tinetest pa ba yung baby na uh, kung nahawa pa rin siya sa mom? Uh, yes, that is suggested. Um, unfortunately, we have no government programs for this yet. Pero typically, ang advice po ng mga pediatric societies is that infants should be tested after the one to two months after nung last dose ng hepatitis B vaccine. Kasi ang hep B vaccine po sa baby, binibigay yung first dose uh, na monovalent, ibig sabihin yung hep B lang na vaccination in the first day of life, and then they get three additional doses na ka, ng hep B vaccine kasama nung penta na tinatawag na pentavalent vaccine at ang last nun is at, the, at 16 weeks, no? Um, so, ang suggestion po sa ganun is dapat, ideally, ba, baka by 9 to 12 months of age, kinukuha na na ng HEPBS antigen test si baby to see kung effective yung prevention uh, measures na ginawa by vaccinating and giving immune globulin. Practically speaking, since very, very, very rare na kailangan magamot ng baby for hepatitis B, usually I just advise my patients or mother who, or yung mothers na nanganganak na you can choose to have your babies check if they got um, hepatitis B from you after one year of life na lang. Kasi kawawa din yung baby na tutusukin, wala namang additional na gagawin. It's just that it's good to know early on if this, these patients have hepatitis B or not. Next slide. So, um, another question since um, available na po is, pwede bang gamutin yung uh, buntis na may hepatitis B? So, ang reason po na magsa-start, ang only reason na magsa-start ng hepatitis B treatment in the form of tenofovir tablets during pregnancy is dalawa. Either merong na-detect na pamamaga ng atay ng mommy, so there's a liver-based na reason, so na-affect yung liver health ng mother at kailangan siya magamot ng tenofovir. Or pangalawa, ang goal mo is to decrease yung risk na mahawa si baby. Kasi even with vaccination, they've seen na kung mataas yung viral load ng mother sa hepatitis B, yung viral load po na tinatawag, yun po yung DNA test. So kung madami yung level ng virus sa uh, dugo, um, ina-advise po na to further decrease the transmission of hepatitis B, you can choose to uh, start your patients on PDF. Yun po yung may pag-aaral na, yung mas naunang version ng tenofovir um, at 28 weeks of gestation. So sa third trimester na po siya, ina-advise na i-initiate para po um, tapos na yung organogenesis. Kung, kung baga nagpapalaki na lang yung baby, formed na yung organs ng baby. So ito po ay option na available kung yung DNA level ay mataas. And ang cut-off na ginagamit is more than 200,000. So dalawa po yung uri ng tenofovir sa Philippines. Sa ngayon po, ang ina-advise pa lang and even dun sa guidelines ng DOH na bigyan is yung mothers, uh, yung TDF, yung lumang version. Kasi as of now, Ang uh, tenofovir alafenamide, ongoing pa po, may ongoing na uh, study for this purpose um, in the U.S. pa. Next. Okay. So, ang isang question na kailangan po uh, antabayanan, no? that's why also we suggest na if you start a hep B positive pregnant mother on treatment with antivirals, na mas maganda kung may kaagapay po na OB infectious disease or hepatologist or gastroenterologist is yung decision on whether to continue or stop the antiviral uh, once nanganak na. Kasi ang susunod na po na tanong niya ng mother is, pwede ba po yun na mag-breastfeed ako kung umiinom ako ng gamot for hepatitis B? So, depende po. Kung halimbawa, yung mother is may problema talaga sa atay, na um, dahil sa hepatitis B, then it may be wiser to continue the treatment. Ibig sabihin, meron po siyang um, liver damage na ongoing and yun yung bukod sa pagbaba ng viral load para hindi mahawa si baby, kailangan din gamutin talaga si mommy. So for these patients, maaring ang i-advise ng inyong doktor ay eh, ituloy. Um, meron pong iba-iba, hanggang ngayon wala pang very clear uh, na uh, yung nag-iisang guideline about this Yung iba po, kasi yung ibang mothers, they don't want to expose the baby um, to any drug kasi may portion po ng tinofovir na masisecrete dun sa uh, breast milk. Gusto nilang mag-stop na agad ng gamot. So, 
maari naman pong gawin yun, pero your provider, uh, your hepatologist, your OB, or the one that's following up the health of the mother should be wary na pag hininto ang gamot after manganak, maaaring magkaroon ng flare. So remember na ininom mo yung gamot, bababa yung viral load. Pag tinigil yung gamot, in-expect no, ulit na tataas yung viral load ng uh, mother. And maari po itong mag ng flares of hepatitis B or pamamaga ng atay. So, basta kung maghihinto po ng gamot, depende sa discussion uh, with the mother and yung health provider, kailangan po alam kung paano babantayan. So, maari po na imomonitor yung DNA level um, pag hininto yung gamot or at the very least, at least yung SGPT level should be monitored by your healthcare provider if the decision is to stop. Okay, next slide. So again, to reiterate, um, breastfeeding is still best. So although sinabi ko po may precautions kasi nga ang sabi nila yung tinofovir may portion na nanesesecrete sa breast milk, it's important to know na even if you're S antigen positive, breastfeeding is not contraindicated. You can still breastfeed your baby. And even if um, may minimal excretion ng tenofovir, it's unlikely to cause significant toxicity based on the data na meron po tayo na malaking data na um, yung tenofovir is used safely by mothers throughout pregnancy and even through breastfeeding kasi ang tenofovir ay party po ng mga gamot na binibigay for HIV and they didn't see any dramatic increases in bad effects sa mga bata na exposed po sa tenofovir kasi uh, umiinom yung mga mother nila na may HIV. So, importante lang po na this is made clear um, in discussions with the mother para makapag-decide din yung mother with the healthcare provider well informed. Next slide. Okay. So, ito po yung, I think this will be close to my last few slides. Ang laging tinatanong is meron ba pong supplement um, na magic for whether for COVID or for hepatitis B? Uh, as you know, um, I think naririnig ko rin sa radyo na nagkakaubusan ng mga um, supplement. So there have been some studies that um, more of mga reports po na nag-try giving ng mga supplemental doses. Ang more popular of these are yung zinc, uh, vitamin C, other micronutrients including selenium. Um, I just put in glutathione because there was a specific question from the um, Yellow Warriors about taking glutathione if there's a benefit for both for COVID and um, uh, COVID and uh, hepatitis B. So for hepatitis B, uh, we will have to maintain ang only real nagamot po talaga sa hepatitis B if you're talking about antiviral effects is antiviral drugs. And that will be either tenofovir disoproxil or tenofovir alafenamide or or in take of year are available na in the Philippines. In terms of yung mga um, infection um, benefit ng taking um, these supplements, well, there have been studies before, like yung zinc is known to improve a response to infection kasi parang um, part siya ng kailangan ng immune system. Um, it's been shown to be helpful in infections in children, including respiratory viruses and even measles. So that's why it's been suggested to uh, take a supplement in patients who are say, uh, baling malnourished. So, no harm in taking. They're also advising vitamin C kahit oral um, because it's also part of, of the antioxidants that we need and our immune system needs to function better. So, in terms, um, but then, as we know, these, uh, these things are actually found in our diet. You know? So, if you're not able to buy supplements, then maybe just look Things that give you nutrients such as vitamin C, you find it in papayas, fruits, pineapple, broccoli, flour, tomatoes. Glutathione, no? so as we know, yung glutathione, although I think in the Philippines it's more popular for, well, people like me na maitim, na gusto magpapote, although I, uh, hindi po ako nag-glutathione, as you can see. So, ang, um, ang, Ang glutathione po, uh, ang arguments is that uh, maaari daw na may variation. So, 
may arguments na yung oral, baka hindi naman na-absorb. Kasi meron pong mga studies na tinignan nila yung mga tao na umiinom ng glutathione capsules and they check the glutathione levels, hindi naman nag increase So, it's really preparation preparation dependent. Um, to yung IV doses po, there's a large burn of yung kulit ng atayong mahal, may mura, and they've found some alarming consequences dun sa mga nakakakuha ng contaminated. And that can include severe infections or um, severe um, hospitalization requiring side effects um, if you are not given by the proper uh, properly ng eye medication na to. So, you should also know that glutathione can actually be gotten from just building blocks that you take from your diet, like asparagus, potatoes, peppers, carrots, squash, spinach. So, colorful fruits and vegetables can help bringing up these um, uh, micronutrient levels in our body. Okay? Next slide. So, more than any supplement, these are um, liver healthy lifestyle choices that we did um, when uh, we lecture to lay, uh, lay people or people with chronic liver disease. Ano yung, uh, what can you do for yourself that will not cost you in terms of keeping your liver healthy? That number one is to avoid things that will harm your liver, and that's obviously alcoholic drinks. So ngayong lockdown, alam po natin na uh, bawal dapat ang alak except in Tagig and Makati. So hopefully that means na pahinga yung liver ng more patients. Um, ingat po sa pag-inom ng drugs and that includes yung mga herbal, natural uh, coffee, herbal tea, herbal capsules. These are still agents that will pass through your liver and can have unpredictable results. So I've had patients po who develop liver injury dahil naglaga lang ng dahon and nagkaroon sila ng unexpected na response dun sa pag-take ng herbal na yun. Also, to avoid getting fatty liver, we advise patients to keep a healthy weight. So as much as you can, even within your homes, exercise um, 30 minutes a day if possible. If you don't have hepatitis B, be vaccinated. So it's really especially if you're in the health zone because you're most exposed to sakit. There's also vaccine for hepatitis A. Ito po yung hepa na nakukuha sa pagkain. So kung wala pa kayong antibodies, so makukuha po yun sa ten, do the hep A and hep B vaccine. And of course, if you already have hepatitis B, it's not the end of the world. You can do regular checkups. Not all patients with hepatitis B will get complications. So your goal is ma mapunta kayo dun sa 70% of patients who live normal and healthy lives as long as they take care of their liver. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so ito na po I think yung aking last slide. So it's a reminder of yung mga how long COVID stays on surfaces. So as you can see, um, sa mga damit, uh, pwedeng two days. So if you work in a high-risk area, sa surgical mask, and that's why we should frequently change or wash our masks, maaring umabot ng one week. So kaya importantly yung paperless transactions kasi um, in money, paper money, um, well, virus can last up to four days and that includes um, yung mga gamit po sa bahay like plastic, um, steel, and glass. They should be frequently wiped with disinfectant solution with alcohol na at least 60% or bleach. So, ang mga importante is wash hands um, uh, for at least 20 seconds with soap, water, or at least 60% alcohol solution. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And that's where sometimes it helps to be always wearing a mask because at least you're reminded not to touch these areas. No, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Uh, get telehealth consultations, meetings na pwedeng online, online na lang po. Keep a safe distance so if you do need to go out, kahit na go walking or running or jogging outside, give a two meters distance in between. Always cover your nose and mouth. So sabi nga nila, um, assume that you are infected so you avoid trying to infect others and keep objects and surfaces clean using the proper disinfectant solution. Okay? Let's make a last slide. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tripon, for that um, extensive lecture. No, So for also reassuring probably those with chronic hepatitis B that 
um, there's no established na study pa that uh, it could cause severe COVID, no? Uh, in fact, um, probably which we should look into more on dun sa fatty liver, which is uh, associated with the other comorbidities na identified by the guidelines. Uh, so, I think important is to stay and live a healthy lifestyle so that their liver will be protected. No po? And for those who are taking medicines, continue with the medicine. So for the first question po, no, related to that, meron lang isa po na nag-chat. Um, if prescribed by doctor with entecavir and then so happen na wala nga po because of the current situation na walan, pwede ba daw po nilang i-shift on their own siguro ito without consultation, doctora, to tenofovir? Um, well... Um, ideally, I don't normally suggest na mag-switch. Pero kung matagal na po kayo naka-entecavir and talagang walang choice, um, better po to at least take um, a not good antiviral and that's tenofovir. But you cannot get it din po without prescription. So talagang best effort to try and reach your doctors. Most hospitals naman po, kung alam niyo yung number ng hospitals, meron namang instructions yung mga doktor kung paano niyo pwedeng ma-reach yung doktor ninyo para mapadalan kayo ng prescription. This is typically what we do for our patients na yun nga po, inabot ng lockdown tapos naubusan ng reseta. In some ways pa, may, may, maari po na baka pwede niyong ordering. So try to get in touch with your doctor. Pero kung wala talaga, if you can get someone to prescribe you what's available, then you, it, it might be the only choice. Uh -oh. Okay, Doctora. Thank you. So another question. Um, Ito po. question sa Marami nga, Doctora. Uh, common ba ang gallstones sa may HEPA B? Um, it's uh, different entity po ito. Um, so, pareho siyang common disease. So, it's not unusual na meron kang um, hepatitis B and may uh, meron kang gallstone. It's not necessarily related. Pareho lang kasi siyang madalas nakikita. Okay po. Ito, doktora, importante ito. Um, allowed ba po mag-work sila abroad yung mga uh, may uh, chronic hep B? Okay. Um, chances, so that's a chances question. Chances na mag-work uh -oh. uh -oh. So usually po, alam mo yan, may Chris can better answer that. Pero from my experience po, it really depends on what country you're applying in. Kasi yung po sa mga GAMCA countries, um, although um, a few years ago, meron na sila supposedly na, um, uh, what do you call this, na parang ang in-exclude lang nila ay yung mga tao who work in the food and health industry Depende pa rin po talaga sa employer. So usually, ang sinasuggest namin, ang countries usually that are more lenient and progressive ay yung mga European, North American countries. Um, hindi naman po imposible na magtrabaho abroad. It's just depende po sa employer. And I think better na for you to be upfront with yung ina-applyan yun na agency para mag-guide din po kayo. And I always suggest that uh, these patients join Yellow Warriors. Meron po silang mga private chat groups and I think yung collective experiences of Yellow Warriors might help guide us to that. Okay, Doktora. So, meron po pong isa. So, medyo mahaba, Doktora. Madali ba daw mapagod ang may HEPA B? Hindi ba dapat mag-exercise ng heavy o gawa ng mabigat na gawain sa bahay? Madali daw po kasi siyang hingalin. Uh, baka iba po yung dahilan no no so ang hepatitis B like i said po usually wala ngang sintoma no um of course para po malaman kung related sa hepatitis B yung nararamdaman niyo kasi kung may pamamaga yung atay pwede kayong parang may flu like illness parang may trangkaso na pakiramdam pag ganun po uh, makikita yon sa inyong mga blood test no so ang best way po to find out is to consult your doctor tapos gagawan po kayo ng blood test. Usually, ang mga minimum po niyan is at least your SGPT. Um, get a liver ultrasound to get a picture of yung inyong atay. And at times, makabubuti na makapagpagawa ng DNA test kasi dun mo talaga mapuprove na merong active na pagdami ng virus sa katawan kung mataas yung viral DNA levels. Okay, doktora. Meron pa isa. Siguro, uh, for the interest of time, we can, ano, two more questions. Ito, doktora, nadaanan ko lang. Um, hindi ko na pangalanan yung brand. Maganda po ba inumin yung silimarin? 
Um, yung silimarine po or milk thistle, wala talaga siyang uh, hard evidence for um, hepatitis B mismo. It's being given as an agent po for um, specific toxin, pero for hepatitis B, hindi po siya kasama dun sa mga uh, recommended drugs. It's really just antiviral. So, um, ang antivirals po na available, na first line will be tenofovir or entecavir, yun lang po. Doon po sa may isang nagtatanong dito uh, kung bakit daw kaya siya binigyan lang siya ng supplement at hindi antiviral. So, hindi po kasi lahat na may hepatitis B kailangan mag-antiviral. So, maari na nakita ng inyong doktor na hindi naman mataas yung SGPT nyo at hindi aktibo na nagre-replicate yung um, virus sa katawan and walang um, evidence of liver damage or yung tinatawag na fibrosis. Paano po yun nakikita? Minsan makakita po yun by doing ultrasound or if you have the benefit of uh, ultrasound-like uh, procedure, yung fibroscan, masasabi ng inyong doktor kung kailangan mo talagang magamot or hindi. Okay. Okay po. Um, so, probably last can we, ano, at least last question po, no? Uh, ito, I'm taking tenofovir. Ilang months po ba dapat para maklear yung HBSAG ko? Or yung average month? Okay. Um, so, pag umiinom po ng antiviral, yun yung laging tinatanong ng mga patients, mawawala ba yung screening test? Unfortunately po, at this time, with the present available treatments, very low yung chance ng zero conversion. So, in most cases po, um, ang magiging uh, undetectable or parang kumbaga Z0 is yung DNA. So, maari na pag nag-start ka ng treatment, mataas yung DNA viral load mo. Yan po yung pwedeng 100,000 or yung sinasabi namin, millions yung value. And you take antiviral drugs in the form of tenofovir or entecavir. In majority of cases, uh, over 60 to 70 percent, after one year na tuloy-tuloy iinom ng gamot, magiging undetectable yung dating mataas na value na yun. Pero yung S-antigen test, which is yung talaga pong bakas nung, um, yun yung screening test, um, bibihira po, no? less than 1 percent yung magne-negative with the present available treatments. So yun pa rin po yung ginagawa nila ng research. And that is why we say to patients before po kami mag-umpisa ng antiviral na um, pag nag-umpisa po tayo ng gamot, in majority of cases, tuloy-tuloy na po natin to iinomin. So parang commitment siya. Kasi sayang na ibababa natin yung viral load mo, tapos ititigil mo, tataas na naman uli. Then babalik po yung uh, damage na maaring magawa niya sa um, katawan. So fortunately these days, medyo mas mura na po yung mga antiviral drugs. Um, maraming choices na, na available um, and um, relatively very low risk of side effects. Especially with the uh, once naging maging ma widely available na po yung tenofovir alafenamide, konti na lang po yung monitoring na kailangan ng patients. No? We can uh, these many Hep B patients can choose to take the drug and suppress yung viral load nila to decrease um, complications of hepatitis B. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tripon. I think um, we are over the time limit na po, no? So, um, sorry for those questions that we could not address anymore. Anyway, we, anyway we'll forward this uh, to uh, Yellow Warriors po na probably para address sila doon. Pwede silang mag-log on dun sa Be Aware, yeah. okay. send the uh, PM there. We'll try to answer. Yung, meron pong um, Facebook page po yung HSP specifically for Hep B patients. Ang tawag po sa kanya ay Be Aware. Meron din po yung um, uh, website uh, kung saan may mga majority of your questions po, um, yung usual questions about hepatitis B masasagot. Yung isa pa po is meron po mga patient stories um, of those with hepatitis B. Um, ma meron din pong uh, Facebook page where you can send PMs. Uh, meron din pong link yung uh, uh, Be Aware website to the directory of the Hepatology Society of the Philippines. So yung mga nagtatanong po saan sila makakapagpatingin, Doon po sa directory ng HSP, pwede nyo pong ilagay kung saan kayo malapit or anong ospital yung gusto nyo puntahan and makikita nyo po sino yung mga doktor ng HSP na maaring um, tumulong po sa inyo for your liver problems. 
Okay, Dr. Ra. Ayun po. So, kung yung for those who na hindi pa po nag-follow nung uh, be aware na uh, if FB page, so yun po, doon po kayo pwedeng mag- okay, ano mag-raise yung inyong mga question. Sige po. So I think uh, para to end lang po no itong session natin. Thank you again for ano joining and attending Dr. Tripon. Salamat for your time po no. Uh, thank you for taking time off to do the lecture and answer yung questions po. So may I call on si uh, the current president of Yellow Warrior Society of the Philippines just to close this uh, uh, day forum uh, Patrick Mr. Patrick Sabulit. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. 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 Yep. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, George Misa um, from Milan, and also Dr. Tripon. Uh, you giving my your time to 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 give your time and na organize tong ano uh, lay forum virtual lay forum para makatulong sa lahat ng member po ng Yellow Warriors. Um, also the the attendees. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, Stay at home. Uh, keep safe from COVID. God bless at all. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Patrick. So, sige po, salamat po sa pag-aten uli at magandang gabi po. Thank you. Uh, take photo po muna bago po tayo umalis lahat. Chris Munoz. Kailangan si George ang gumawa. George. <laughs> Hi, Doktor. Hi, Manikar. Yeah, ano malaya pa si George eh. Hindi, dito sir. So, yung mga gusto pong ano, magpa-picture, i-on nyo lang po yung video ninyo. Yeah, so, uh, kaso hindi tayo naka-ano. Sa screen ko, hindi tayo naka-quadrant. Na Nakaano pa rin siya na, nasa Hello Jem pa rin. Yung sa akin na lang sir dito ko na lang kuku anuhin. Picturean. Makita ba sa iyo? Okay, hindi ko makita. Pero maraming pages, mga ilang pages lang siguro. Andale. Hello. Okay, so naka-on ba yung mga ano natin? Yung video. Yung gallery. Puro pangalan lang kayo eh. Puro pangalan lang ba? <laughs> Sorry. Ayan. Oo. Hi Mark. Oo. Oh. Pakita rin si dito walang ano eh. Si George yata nakikita niya. Ayan, picture ko. May nakawa na po. Sige, so ano lang muna. Okay, one, two, three. Isa pa. Stay lang ako. Wala akong makita ng video. Okay, Ito sa akin. Nung karawa, one, two, three right now. So, I'm just... Ayan, nakuha na ko na lahat. Uh, yung iba, hindi nag-on ng video po eh. Pero nakuha na ko yung mga lahat ng naka-on. Dalawang ano lang page. So, isend ko na lang sa sa'yo, uh, Sir Chris, tsaka kay Pat. Yeah, thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, George. You, George. Doktora. Okay. Doktora. Doktora, thank you. Salamat. Ingat po kayong lahat. Okay. Thank you. Mark, ingat, Mark. Ingat. Bye. Marika, nanay, ingat ka, Lai. Sana kayo. Nanay, ako, nanay.